Yeah. All right. Hey everyone and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host Chef AJ and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well today is the second Monday of the month which means it's time for plant-based classics with Lauren Burnick and you guys said that you really want a French onion soup, an authentic one that's vegan and healthy without oil. So Lauren's been working on it. She's going to debut it today along with Caesar salad in is it endive or endive cups? I'm so excited for this recipe. Please welcome back Lauren Burnick. I, you've been working so hard creating this Hello. Just recipe. Yeah, please. How yes. are you? I'm good. I have been working hard on this recipe because, you know, it means a lot to me. I don't want to give you some cruddy recipe that you make and you're like, <laughs> you're funny. so disappointing. I, I, no. I, your hair is just amazing. I just love your hair. I can't help it. I just washed it, fluffed it up just for you, Chef AJ. I mean, it must, it's so, it's probably easy to take care of, isn't it? Yeah, it, I'm not going to lie. It's easy to take care of. I just like wash it. And I've told you my routine before I get the diffuser and just put the gel in it, turn my head upside down and just dry it. It's pretty easy. Yeah. I saw somebody on YouTube drying her hair with a colander, like a spaghetti colander instead of a diffuser. <gasps> That's so interesting. That's funny. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. Every, everybody's commenting about your hair in the chat. So she got the show based on her hair, really, guys. No, That's just... right. <laughs> well, I'll tell y'all that when I was a teenager and Farrah Fawcett hair was in style, I suffered then. So I got, I, I know, you know, I really, I tried to iron my hair. I tried to like do it. We really didn't even have any good um, gel products or anything, but you know, I had like dippity do and I don't even I know what I put that. in. Remember VO5, that? I remember. VO5. Did you iron your hair? I do now actually, cause my hair is curly, oh, yeah. but, but growing up, I don't remember what I, I actually, my hair would be a lot like yours if I didn't cut it short. So it, it rings. So there that's you go. I, yeah. Throw it out. Let's see it. Oh, I, tr every time I try, you know, you get to that stage and it's like, ugh, forget it. You know, that is the hardest thing growing out here, I think. Well, you have a beautiful face. And so you, you really need a good face if you're going to wear your hair short. So that is exactly what my husband said, <laughs> which is very <laughs> smart. Oh, so onion Charles soup. is no dummy. Are you going to even do that little thing of bread like they do in it? You know how yes. they in the restaurant? Oh, my God. You're really making it exactly I'm like I'm making it. Yes. Um, I'm making some millet bread. And uh, then we're going to use, it's not my recipe. It's uh, my friend that I introduced you to over email, uh, Shane Martin, his from Shane and Simple. I'm sure a lot of people follow him. We're going to do his cheese on the top and we're just going to use a little dollop of it. So, okay. Oh, you ready? Should we get started? Yeah. Have an ambitious let's, schedule here. Let's do okay, it. Let, let's right. do it. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do, I, uh, so the main thing about French onion soup is you have to caramelize the onions and it takes a long time. So I actually did those in advance, but I'm going to still show you how to do it. I'm going to get it going because it takes like 45 minutes to an hour to properly caramelize them and you have to babysit them. So I would be doing that the whole show. So I had to do that in advance. Um, I actually... I could turn over my, I actually went online and, and looked up how to cut an onion. So I went and embarrassed myself today. Like I usually do. Um, let's see, is this my thing working? Why so my really, it working? takes that long, 45 minutes to caramelize. That's incredible. Yeah. Have you done that before? Yeah, but I don't know. It goes okay, faster for me first. I guess maybe, are you cutting them in like little, uh, little pieces or like longer shreds? The long, I'm doing the longer shreds. Is that yeah, what so you that, do? that would take longer, I think, than when you cut them really small. Okay. Let me see. I'm trying to get my other camera to work. Why are you doing this? iPhone camera. Mac camera. iPhone. Dang it. Why is my thing not working again? Oh, no. Well, do mm. the best you can with what you've got technically. Okay. Okay. Wait, hold on. Let me try one more thing. I think, and then I will not bore you with this. Um, camera. Okay, let's just start this way and I'll see if I can figure it out. Okay, dang it. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is 
cut up the onions. So this takes like five to six onions and I'm not going to do the whole thing because that would be, I'm just going to show you with one onion what you would do. So you just cut off the ends, get rid of the yucky outer layers. Let me back up. Um, cut it in half. And then you're just gonna, so that's the root part. And you're just gonna kind of slice it like this long ways. You're not gonna go all the way to the end. Kind of just slice them up a little bit on the thinnish side. Okay. Got that going. So Chef AJ, did you read that book? The lessons. Okay, I knew you were gonna ask me this. So, <laughs> okay. So okay, the short answer is no. However, this is the thing. You inspired me to do read a fiction book. I, oh. I so here's what happened. I I have a guest that was referred by Dr. Doug Lyle. She is a vegan and she she's an attorney, I believe. And she wrote a novel that Doug loved, Dr. Doug Lyle, called Marrying Myself. And she wanted to be on the show. I said, look, I just don't have time to read a book. But as soon as it's on Audible, I'd be happy to have you on. Well, it's on Audible now. So I have to listen to it. I mean, I don't have to, but I want to before she comes on. So sure. because of you, you inspired me to at least expand my repertoire and, and, and include fiction books. So oh, I am listening good. to my first fiction book and you know what? It's not so bad. So what I might do is then the next one will be uh, the it was chemistry, something about chemistry. Lessons in chemistry. Lessons in chemistry will be Lessons next. But I chemistry. knew you were going to ask me. I knew you were going to ask me that. So at least I, I, I sort of half did what you asked. Well, that's good. I'm glad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. It's just like with, fic with fiction, you have to kind of like think in your head, like you can't see the characters and you have to kind of make them up. That's why I think why, why I like movies so much because it's all done for me, you know? Yeah, I get that. I do. I understand that. Let's see. Okay. Dang it. I really wish my thing was. Okay. And then I cut the little stemmy part out and then you just break up the onions. I don't know why my ca second camera is not working. Do you have a young person at the house? They usually can figure stuff like that. No, I do not have a young person at the house. Just a dog. She's young. She's not very technically advanced. Technologically advanced. Oh, my God. <gasps> Bless you. Eyeballs. Onions, onions hurt the eyes sometimes, don't they? They really do. Okay. Well, this would have been a lot better if you can't. Okay, I'm really bummed you can't see this, but let me move this out of the way since this is useless now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I get, like to get my pan going, get it nice and hot before I put my onions in. And then we're gonna start caramelizing it with, okay, I'm gonna use my dark, cloudy apple juice. If you remember, that's what I did with my uh, beefless stew. I got half a cup of that in there. And then I'm going to do like a half a teaspoon of miso. So when you're caramelizing onions, you usually do it with like a little salt and a little sugar. But since we're not using salt and sugar, we're going to use the apple juice to make it sweet and the miso to make it salty. So I'm just gonna stir that up, get it going. I did like a half a cup of apple juice, half a teaspoon of miso. The miso doesn't always blend right away. Now I'm gonna put the onions in the pan first. I'm not gonna put that in right away. Get the onions going. Um, you wanna let them get like a little sweaty and a little bit you know, with some brown stuff at the bottom, because then we're going to deglaze the pan. Deglaze. Deglaze my pan, baby. Okay. Dang, I'm so upset about this because it would be so much better if you could see in my pan. Let's see. 
I think I didn't start this camera through here through Zoom. Um, let me see. Did that work? Nope. Oh, well. Okay. We're just going to do the best we can. All right. So let me move this. Come with me, my love. I'm going to take you to my stove. We'll do it this way. All yeah. right. So. They're going. You're getting a li some little brown spots in there. So normally I would have five or six onions in my big pan. I'm just giving you like a little example of how to get it going. While I'm doing that, I think I'm actually going to start my caramel. These are what they end up looking like. These are the caramelized onions that I did in advance. So let me get my pan hot so I can start those. Oh, they smell so good. There's just nothing like the smell of onions, right? It smells so delicious. And you're cooking, makes your house smell so good. I love that. You know, have you ever uh, caramelized your onions in advance and then just frozen for other purposes later? Because I've heard you can do that. No, but you know what? That's not a bad idea. And you can do oh, a bunch at so a time, you know? Yeah, because they're really kind of a pain. Oh, they're so sticky and delicious. Mm. Lori's asking if Worcestershire sauce is vegan and you can get vegan Worcestershire sauce, but yes. some isn't. It just depends. I use that brand. I get it at Whole Foods. It's yeah. uh, Wa, Wan Ja Chan, vegan Worcestershire. Okay, so now you can see, see how my pan's getting brown and the onions are starting to get brown. You want to have the heat up pretty good, at least. Maybe I even have it a little high, but medium. That's probably a little higher. Okay, now I'm gonna throw in my apple juice miso mixture. And uh, Lisa's asking what kind of pan you're using. These are uh, La Crusade. La Crusade, yeah. La Crusade. I have some, um, I think they're called Extrema. They're cera or Ceramicor. Um, and then I also have a scan pan that I'm gonna use later too. Okay, so now I have it going. Some of the brown bits are coming up. These are going back here. Okay. So we'll just keep an eye on these and watch how those go. Let me move. I'm going to move the pans around. Okay. So now I have, now I'm concentrating on these big boys. And we'll still keep an eye on this. Okay. So now the last time after about you know, you just have to keep your eye on this. You're only going to use the apple juice mixture the first time around. First time you use the apple juice, you have to kind of like keep an eye on this. Maybe every five minutes you'll have to stir it. And you don't want to keep using apple juice because that would be way too sweet. So after that initial round, you're just going to keep some water by your pan and you're going to just keep checking it. And when they get dry and they start sticking to the pan again, You'll add a little more water, a little more water, a little more water. You'll just keep on going until you finally have something that looks like that. Now, on the left, when you decide, okay, it's been like 45 minutes or an hour and these look really good. Um, the last time you deglaze the pan, oh, I got an ingredient. You have such a great kitchen. Where, thank you. Where did I go? Okay. <laughs> the last time through that you're going to deglaze the pan, 
You could use either a little white wine. Uh, you could use a little more apple juice. I'm going to use some cooking sherry because I love the taste of this with mushroom. I had to order this online. Now they're calling it vintage cooking wine, cooking sherry. Like you can't, I couldn't even find it in the store. So look, see how it's getting brown and sticky to the pan again. My last time I'm going to deglaze it with some cooking sherry, maybe a couple teaspoons. It gets all the brown bits up. Ah, oh, smells so good. Okay. And now I'm going to use, oh, I wanna put in a little garlic. This is where I'm gonna add my two cloves of minced garlic. Give that a little stir, let that cook for a minute. Mmm. Yeah. I, I love the way the house smells when you have onions cooked. I know. Yeah. I know. It really smells like somebody lives there. It smells like love. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to do two containers of this mushroom broth. And I chose mushroom broth instead of um, just regular vegetables because it gives it a, like a little umami flavor. You can half this recipe if you know you just live by yourself, or maybe even there's two people. You could just use one container of this, but I like to have leftovers. And after I'm on your show, I always have my kids over. They come over and eat, and so I'm making two containers of this. It's enough for about six people. Do you, ever, do you ever make your own broth? You know, I do, but I haven't made mushroom broth. I make um, just like out of this, you know, keep my scraps, mm -hmm. um, vegetable scraps, just throw them in the freezer and then just make a, a broth. But I don't, I don't do that nearly as much as I should. I get distracted. I have so many things. Okay. I'm going to put a tablespoon of Worcestershire. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Sounds like saying, right what's this here sauce? Yeah. What's this here sauce? Um, so, you know, you can add a little thyme. It just depends on your, what you like. But I, I made it a bunch of different ways. And I'm going to be honest. I just like it really simple like this. Um, so that's all I'm putting in there right now. I'm going to bring it to a boil. At this point, you can taste it. And see, make sure it's like salty enough for you and not too sweet. Oh my God, it's perfect. If you want it a little sweeter, you can add a little more apple juice. If you want it a little saltier, you can put a little more miso and even put a little Bragg's liquid amino. If you really love uh, thyme, you can put a little thyme in there or you can put some bay leaves, but uh, I don't want, I don't love that. Uh, sometimes I cook with the kombu. I put a little piece of kombu in there, which is just a sea vegetable. I did it that way. That's really good. Uh, actually, I might break that out. I like that. It gives it a little salty flavor. It gives it some good minerals. And you just snip off a little piece, just put it in the pot. Um, sometimes depends how long you cook your broth, it'll kind of dissolve in there. Uh, or if it's just like still in a big piece, if it's something you don't cook as long, then you'll just pull that piece out. You don't eat the combo, but it's just a sea vegetable and it gives it minerals and some flavor. Is, isn't it true that when you cook beans with kombu, it increases their digestibility? That's what I've heard. I mean, I don't know. That's what the internet told me, but yes. <laughs> The Google's told me yes. So that's that, that's going. Okay, you can see my other onion. They're starting to go over here. But we're not gonna concentrate on those so much. Okay, so let me start my oven because I'm gonna need that next. Um,
Okay, so the onions are going. You can see these are starting to soften. They still have a lot of liquid in them because I put as much liquid as if I were cooking five to six onions. So those will go for a while. I'm actually gonna turn those off because I don't wanna have to worry about them, but I just wanted to show you how I get them started. So now the broth is cooking. We're gonna let that cook for, you know, I don't know, close to 20 minutes. And let's go back over here. And next we're going to do <laughs> the, me? Do you, okay, do, next you, we're gonna, do you have a dog? I do. She's in my husband's office because hey, she goes crazy. Um, like if somebody walks by the house with the dog, forget it. Charles, can you please? Yeah. This is what happens when you're in people's houses, you know? This is how we live now. Yep. So. But she, I don't, she's barking at nothing. That's the thing. You don't know she's barking at nothing. What if she's barking at a ghost? Yeah. Or... <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Uh, uh, don't, don't let her talk to you that way, Bailey. I believe you. How dare she? How dare she? Does she stay in there when you when you do your shows? Yeah, she likes to sit on my lap, and it's fine as long as she's oh, not as long as she my doesn't. My dog bark. is so big. She's like sixty five pounds. What kind is okay. she? Okay, she's a mutt. She's super cute. I'll let her come in here one day just to say hi. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is the millet bread. That's gonna be the little piece of bread that goes in the middle of our yummy soup. I just wanna make sure that's not boiling. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is have two and a half cups of water, and then we're gonna add um, a third cup of psyllium husk, and it's gonna make like a little gel. We'll just add this to the water, and we're gonna add how much? a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. I need more measuring spoons. Okay, this is gonna make like a little gel, the psyllium husk in the water. Clever. I've been using this, uh, I adapted this recipe from Power Hungry. So she's clever. Okay, so it'll sit for a minute and then it's gonna start gelling up there. So while I'm mixing my other stuff, it'll looks disgusting. Do you have like a special bowl to serve it in? You know how like it sometimes has a little handle? I don't know what those soup bowls are called. You know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh, I do. I thought you were talking about the bread. Look what I have. These were my mom's. I don't know what they're called either, but, um, and they have little lids. I used to have four of them and now I'm down to two. So one has a matching little lid. I don't know why it has a lid because you need to brown it. And then the other has this sad, not matching lid, but yeah, these are from, if you guys have watched me before and you've seen my old gold Cuisinart, this is from the same stuff. My mom's old French onion soup thingies. Um, so I was really glad I had these. I love these. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna like, if next time I see like an old person estate sale, I'm gonna see if they have more of these. And I promise you, I'm gonna buy another one of those gold uh, Cuisinarts because you, that's from my childhood. That thing's gotta be more than 40 years old. I bet you that thing's 45 years old. Okay, so while that's gelling up, now we're gonna add two and a half cups of millet flour. And I used this brand. I mean, I think they're all good, but this is a uh, relative foods, organic millet flour. And of course you can make your own, but I did not. Uh, two teaspoons of baking powder. Whoa. Two. Okay. Half a teaspoon of baking soda. Okay, this is starting to boil, so I'm just gonna turn it down, let it simmer. Put the lid on in a sec. Okay, what did I say? Half a teaspoon of baking soda. And 
And then I am adding a little nutritional yeast to this. I know you don't eat that chef, AJ, you could totally leave this yeah, out. I've, I've been off it for a while. It seems like I get a tummy ache whenever I eat it. And I wish I knew why. And I wish that didn't happen. You know, I've heard that from, there's some people it affects. Um, but you could totally leave this out. I'm putting a quarter cup of nutritional yeast. And then I'm putting uh, three cloves of garlic. I want it a little cheesy and garlicky. Okay. I think that kind of complements the soup. Let me give this a good stir. Okay, you can see this thing is starting to gel up. It looks disgusting. Look at that. Kind of looks like applesauce now. Ugh. That's psyllium husk, man. That's some good stuff. And I had it in the house because I used it in your recipe for um, your cranberry relish, Chef AJ. Nice. Yeah, I love it. It's a nice way to get some extra, not that we need extra fiber if you're eating a whole food plant-based diet, but you know, I'm always, my, cho my cholesterol does not like to be low. And so psyllium husk is a good thing to, to add wherever I can. Okay, so I've got that stirred up. Now I'm gonna add the ooky jelly gross thing to it. Give that a good stir. This bread it came out so good. I baked some uh, like before just to try out the recipe and it's really nice. Oh, guess what I'm reading? So you said I inspired you and I watched um, Dr. Lyle and Dr. Goldhammer when they were on your show and I'm reading The Pleasure Trap. Oh, nice. Are you actually reading it, reading it or listening? Yeah. To it? No, I'm reading it, reading it. Wow. That's I like great. To read yeah, it's great. I've read, um, I actually ordered it on my Kindle before from the library and didn't get through the whole thing before it expired because I read like four or five books at a time. Um, I usually read like a nonfiction, uh, you know, some kind of business book, some kind of health book, fiction. So I have like several books going at once. So it's not a great, it's not a great idea, by the way, if you get them from the library, because then a lot of times you actually don't get to finish them. So I never finished it. And so I actually paid for and ordered the book because I'm like, I, this is a book I'm going to want to keep for sure. Um, so I ordered it. I'm reading it. I'm going to take my rings off and wash my hands and just get my hands in here. Not that you care because you're not eating this, but I had already washed my hands. They're doubly clean now. <laughs> get my hands in here. I don't want you to think I'm an animal. Okay, get the bread going. Make sure I got everything in here. Um, it also calls for salt, but I'm, I left the salt out. Just, do you need salt when you're baking it for uh, some reason? Like when you're baking bread? I mean, I don't know that either, but I just left it out. Should be fine. Oh, it's really gooey. Um, but yeah, this is millet. It's a lovely whole grain. Like I use it, I cook it like, you know, just you do like brown rice and I have it with my beans. So there's, this is Chef AJ approved. Dr. Goldhammer and Dr. Lyle approved. I, li I really like to, I'm actually hosting uh, one of them for PBNSG at the end of the year. I think it's Dr. Goldhammer. So pray for me. He didn't do it already? I thought he did one just recently. Uh, then maybe it's Dr. Lyle. I don't know. Oh, that'd be cool. I could be wrong. Yeah. I'm excited for either one. I like them both. They're awesome. Okay. I'm going to wash my hands. How do you spell the Caesar and Caesar salad? Is it got the I think it's, I feel like it's C-A-E-S-E-R. Yeah. Because it's named after a person, I think. Right. Caesar. <laughs> I think, it that was crazy a, I think it was like Caesar Cardine. I think it was actually a chef somewhere. Oh, yeah. You know what? I think you're right. I think you're right. Because I saw, um, they used to sell like a bottled salad dressing. And I think that was the name. 
many, many years ago when I would eat salad dressing out of a bottle. Okay, so also you wanna have your hands kind of nice and wet now. Uh, you're just gonna get a loaf pan, put your parchment paper in there, and then put this in here. And with your dampish hands, kind of mold it. I mean, it's already gonna mold to the loaf, but try and make it like not lumpy and weird looking. And then you're gonna just bake it in the oven at 325 for 90 minutes. Um, I'm gonna bake this later because I have my oven going at a different temperature right now, but I already baked it. And where is it? And I'll show you what it looks like. No, no. Look how fast I did that. <laughs> Isn't that nice? It tastes really good. And I already toasted some incredible. of it. I mean, that is incredible that it's so easy to make bread like that. It was really easy. Um, and then so you can just slice it up. I already toasted this. And I got my little biscuit cutter. Now, you don't have to do this. You can do the bread however you want for your little bowl or however you're gonna heat it up in the oven. But I thought, oh, it'll be cute if I do it like this and make like a little circle. Then it can kind of fit. Oh, I shouldn't have probably toasted that. Make it all round and cute. But then you don't get the crusty part. That's the only problem. And then this one, I'm going to put a little garlic. This one's going to be my crouton for our salad. So I'm going to just put a little garlic powder on it. You could do, you know, real garlic. That would be better, but I'm doing it the lazy way. Um, and then I'm just going to cut. I've already toasted this, so I'm just going to cut this one up into little crouton squares. And again, you can do your soup however you want. If you like the, the crusty part, just do the crusty part. There's no wrong way. Okay. The end pieces were always the best. I know, they are. I remember my mom used to say that and I'd be like, ew, gross, it's crust. But then you grow up and you, you realize, yeah, there's something to that. I'm gonna cover my soup. Okay, now I'm going to make the salad dressing for our salad. Okay, come, let me move you back over here. Let's see, where would you like to be? Let's put you right here. Yeah, Linda, the recipes are in the show notes out. I have to wait until the show starts to put the recipes in. It's kind of complicated, the technology thing, but it's there now, but only if you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching on Facebook or Twitter, you gotta hop on over to YouTube to see the recipes. Okay, so now we're going to do the salad dressing. Um, so I actually started this already as well. I started with a half a cup of plant milk and I put a tablespoon of chia seeds in there. And I did that earlier so it would give it time to sit and then sort of gel a little bit, kind of like the um, what the psyllium husk did in the water. So same thing. I normally I make this in a blender, but I'm going to use my Vitamix in a second. So I want to keep it clean for this. So I did the plant milk and the chia seeds. Now I'm going to add a teaspoon of the vegan Worcestershire. Worcestershire. That's a it feast sounds like there's that. somebody is saying, what's this here sauce? Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. sauce. <laughs> yeah, it does sound like that. Crazy name. Uh, Here, let me read a couple of uh, comments and questions. And thank okay. you, uh, thank you, Debbie. She says they're called French onion soup crocs. I always wondered what those handles. Oh, are. crocs! That's right. That's yeah. what it is. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Susanna has seen them at thrift stores. I used to have a set of, yeah. food, you know, but they when they break, you know, they're very cool though to be able to hold the handle. And Deborah's saying, can you substitute ground flax for the hulls? Maybe she means the psyllium husk. Oh, the psyllium husk. Um, I, I think that that would work. I think so. 
you know what? I don't, you don't know until you try, but go ahead and give it a try. And I mean, go ahead. Terry says, any other flour to use? And you can use, says, can you buy whole millet? I mean, you'd still have to grind it though. You couldn't use whole millet to make bread. I don't think, but I don't know for sure. I think you would have to, gr I'm pretty sure you would have to grind it. You can, you know, this is just what this recipe is. I don't know how it would do with other, um, with other flours, but to be honest, you could just do Ezekiel bread. You don't even have to make bread. I just did it because I know that, you know, Chef AJ likes to stick to whole grains and not do too much processed foods, which is obviously the best way for all of us to eat. Um, so I was just trying to kind of stick to that. It was, um, but it's kind of fun to show how easy it is to make something like it was, that. Right. It was so easy. Um, so that's that. So I just threw some mustard in there. I exploded it all over everything and then threw it in there. Uh, I'm going to do a half of, so this is the Caesar salad dressing. I'm going to do a half a teaspoon of the kelp granules. You just get these at Whole Foods. You don't really have to measure it, but I'm just going to measure today. Unlike my usual self, uh, juice of a whole lemon. So I always cut off both ends, cut it in half before I stick it in my little juicer thing. I love this thing. I probably, I use this so much. Juice of a lemon. Is it called a reamer? I think so. You know all the things. Okay. Two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. Again, you could leave it out. Uh, and then two cloves of garlic. Already minced up my garlic. I like a lot of garlic in there. And then like a little half a teaspoon of miso. Okay, now I'm just gonna blend this up. Like I said, I usually would do this in the Vitamix, but I'm just gonna do this in here. Let's scrape it down. I'll give it a little taste. Make sure it doesn't need anything else. Oh, it's delicious. Okay. Perfect. Okay, let's go back over here. Okay, so now we're just gonna make the little salad cups. Oh my God, the kitchen is always so crazy. <laughs> Disaster. I got these at Trader Joe's, but you could get some bigger ones. These are the Belgian endive or endives, however you say them. But I've seen bigger ones at just the store. Um, okay, so these are going to be teeny tiny little ones, but they're cute. And, you know, obviously you don't have to do it. You could just put a big old bowl of Caesar salad and call it a day. Um, but I just thought it would be cute, a different way to do it. I mean, oh, my lettuce. Uh, your romaine lettuce. That's what you want to do for a Caesar. I always keep a ton of lettuce already washed and ready to go because I eat a lot of salads. Where is my knife? Okay. So you're just going to chop up the romaine. It's really tiny, little bitty pieces. And let me also say, this would not make a whole meal for me. A little tiny crock of soup and a little cup of, you know, endive. This is just to be fancy. It's just for presentation. 
or if you're having it with something else or you're just having some friends over, you want to have it just as something. If I were going to eat it, I would eat a giant salad and a little crock of soup and maybe even something else. Who knows? I like a lot of, you got to have some bulk when you're eating this way. Okay. Then just get like a little bowl, get your dressing, put your salad in there. And you're going to just mix it with your dressing. Not too much. See how it goes. I do like a lot of dressing though. I mean, a good amount. I want it to all be covered. Oh, it smells so good. It's so yummy and garlicky and it's, it's delicious. Sometimes I don't use the plant milk and the chia seeds. Sometimes I do it with garbanzo beans. I like those um, as a base as well. At this time, I just decided to do it that way. Okay. Then you're just gonna fill up your little cups. And then put a little crouton on top. Look how cute that is. Isn't that adorable? So just like a cute. little, and then you just take a little bite. It's so good. That's it's adorable. So good. Yeah. It's so adorable and delicious. Okay. You can make some more of these later. All right. Let's get moving. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and make um, the cheese that's going on top of the on top of the big crouton we have in there, or the big bread we have in there. Okay, like I said, this is Shane Martin's um, recipe. So the first thing I normally wouldn't do this because it calls for a half a cup of cashews. The reason I'm doing it is you're gonna see, we're just gonna use a little tiny bit. And then I think I could be wrong. I'll let you know how it goes. I'm gonna slice up the rest and freeze it and see if we could do it. So the first thing you're gonna do is boil um, some water and cover your cashews and either boil the cashews half a cup for five minutes or just pour some hot water over it and let it sit for about 20 minutes. I already did that. So my cashews are nice and plumped up. And then a cup of water, a tablespoon of lemon. I'm not gonna measure that out. I'm just gonna, I think that's about a tablespoon. Okay. And a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. And let's see. Um, one and a half teaspoons of nutritional yeast. You could leave that out, I suppose. A teaspoon of garlic powder. Put that in there. And let's see, did I get everything? Oh, a quarter cup of tapioca flour. So this is what's gonna bind it together and make it all thick. This is a really cool recipe because it, it really, um, Wait till you see how this cheese comes out. It's so like stringy. All right, so got my cashews, water, lemon juice, apple cider vinegar, nutritional yeast, garlic powder, tapioca flour. And his recipe says salt, but I didn't put any salt. Okay, I'm just gonna blend it up. Sorry to turn my back to you. Are you guys going to try this recipe? Have any of you made French onion soup vegan? I don't think okay, I, I didn't hear. Were you talking to me? Oh, I was talking to the audience to see if anybody was going to try the recipe and if they've ever had French vegan onion soup. 
Oh. Vegan French onion soup. <laughs> vegan French onion soup. Okay, so the soup looks ready. All right, so now I'm getting my pan. This is a scan pan, in case anybody wants to know what kind of pan it is. Um, I'm gonna bring you back over here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna move my bread. Okay. This is so cool, wait till you see this. So I just blended all that up, I'm throwing it in, in the pan. And then it's gonna start to do its thing and get all sticky and gooey. My other camera's work not working. I gotta get that. I gotta get that fixed. <clears throat> this comes together pretty quickly. Okay, well that's cooking. I'm gonna start my little crock now that we know what it's called. I knew that was called a crock. Have you what tried? Crock? Has anyone tasted this recipe in your family yet? Oh yeah, my husband ate it. Uh, when I test, was testing it, and he actually really liked it. And he's a tough audience. But he said it would be better with regular cheese. Oh my God. I know. He's so tough, AJ. I don't know what I'm going to do with him. Let's take him to True North. But he North. did like it. Yeah. I know. He needs to go to True North. Yep. And then he'll fast and then he'll appreciate how wonderful your food is. He'll be like, damn, your food's good. Absolutely. I want to go there. Well, you'd be two hours from me and then we can play. <gasps> wow, that'd be crazy. Okay. Can you see how this is starting to get? Like a, little, like a little bit uh, thicker, kind of. Yeah, it's going up. Um, I can't remember her name. Faith, get to the root wellness. She's been on your show. Oh, yeah, she's she wonderful. She has a good cheese recipe as well. And I've made hers with the lactic acid and the agar, agar. I'm not sure how you say that. Uh, it's good. That's freaky too when you start cooking it up and it's so weird. Okay, so see how it looks like mo real mozzarella? I know you wouldn't put mozzarella on French onion soup. I know you'd be like using a gruyere or something like that, but this is the best I could do, guys. And again, if you, I sent a link for Shane, uh, Shane Martin at Shane and Simple. He has really good recipes, but a lot of them are a little too fatty for me, but they are certainly delicious. Um, and actually, you know, I've, you told me that I wasn't cooking with enough fat for my husband. And so I've actually made some of his recipes for my husband and he does seem to like them. Okay, I'm going to call that done. So now I got, the soup in there. What do I do with my crouton? My giant bread. Okay, so now I'm putting just this French onion soup in there with the bread on top and really just like one or two tablespoons of this right on top of the bread. Let me try to put this down. Oh my God, that looks so realistic. It is realistic. I just, it's it's super real. It's right here in the kitchen. Okay, I'm just going to put it under the broiler for my broilers at 450 for five minutes. Um, I probably should set a timer because I'm Hannah Kaminsky and I set my kitchen on fire at Thanksgiving with my broiler. It's so, it's a might powerful one. Okay. So while that's cooking, let me. Yeah. Lynette, you're watching on Facebook. If you just hop over to YouTube, you'll be able to see the recipes. They've been posted there. We just can't put them there because that's not the way that 
technology I use is used because this is actually a YouTube show. We just also stream it on Facebook. Can, can you use a mixer to mix the bread, uh, says Terry, if you don't want to use your hands? Uh, I have never used a bread mixer. I don't know. I don't see why not. You know, the thing is, don't be afraid. Just give everything a try. Some, plenty of times I make a recipe and I'll do it maybe the way I think it should be done and it doesn't work out and just make it differently the next time. And that's all you can do. You can just give it a try. Don't be afraid. Maybe she just doesn't want to, maybe she, if she wanted, she could use food service gloves. If may, I'm not sure why she doesn't want to use her hands, but maybe food service gloves. Yeah. Is it that or? If that's the reason I'm thinking, you know. Yeah. I love sure. my hands and putting the lid. I do too. Like putting the I lid into too. the food, you know. It, yeah, it's, yeah. Huh. It's very as as clean, but you know, you could use food service gloves if it's just because you didn't want to touch it. Yes. Okay. So that's going in the broiler now. Um, I have my timer set. The last thing I'm going to do, because it's still Passover, I told you I'm going to show you how to make my harosis. Um, I already chopped up the apples. A so bonus recipe. You, a bonus recipe. A bonus. Woo! Okay, so for those of you who don't celebrate Passover or know what Hiroshi is, you don't have to, You this is so good. You could eat this by itself. You don't have to eat it on matzah. You could eat it, this is so good on oatmeal. So it's, or just a little snack. I honestly just eat it out of the bowl. So I just chopped up two apples. Um, generally you use like Manischewitz wine or some kind of kosher wine or grape juice. I'm just using organic grape juice to coat the apples, just enough. You don't want to use too much. Give it a stir, but it makes it nice and sweet. It is yummy. This is such a, this is like my favorite thing. And I, I just eat it straight out of the bowl, like a little snack. And then I used nine big medjool dates and I cut them up already. Now this is, they're going to be so sticky and stick together, but I really need to separate them. They get so stuck. They're so good. These are the big fat ones. Might have used too many, but in my opinion, you really can't have too many dates. Um, some people, my mom used to make it with raisins, but I think it's so much better with dates. A lot of people use walnuts in this. I don't eat a lot of nuts uh, for heart disease reasons, but and then some people say walnuts are great for your heart. So you know what? If you eat nuts, chop up some walnuts, put them in there. And okay, let me wash off my hands again. Give it a good stir. I needed a bigger bowl. All right, then just some cinnamon. I like a lot of cinnamon. Oh, this smells so good. I wish you guys could come over to eat. I'm gonna have plenty of food. I know. Not enough for all of you. You have a big zoomanity, zoomunity. You <laughs> call them your zoomunity, zoomunity, community, community. You have so many lovely people who watch your show. You really do. That's my timer for the French onion soup. Okay, wait till you see this. You are not going to believe this. I could even leave this in another minute. Doesn't that look just like real, not vegan French onion soup? Yep. All bubbly. It's so good. I'm going to actually put that in for one more minute because I wanted a little browner. And like I said, I toasted that bread in advance. Okay, let me just set my timer because I'm pretty famous for not remembering. Jerry's saying that would be yummy on oatmeal. That's a great use of That's what I, yeah. Totally. Oatmeal is, it's so good in oatmeal. 
Okay, now here's my secret ingredient, some orange zest. It's so good. So I would tell you, buy an organic orange and then wash the hell out of it. That's how I feel about uh, zesting things, you know, to really make sure it's organic and then you wash it. I do that when I zest a lemon, a lime, whatever it is. Because, <clears throat> man, they really spray the hell out of these things, even organic. Oh, God. This is so fresh and delicious. It's a great snack. And that's really it. And just eyeball everything. Like I said, I started with two apples, nine dates, chopped up cinnamon and orange juice, or I mean, orange zest and some either grape juice or wine. And that's it. That's amazing. You got this all done in under an hour too. Oh my God. I know. I was really kind of panicked. Yeah. Oh, I let it go too long. I told you, my thing is a beast. All right. Well, you got to see what it looked like before I burned it. So now it's a little too bubbly, but it tastes delicious. And I'm going to have that for lunch. Oh, I did it, Chef AJ. That is amazing. You are really amazing, Lauren. <laughs> not. <laughs> I am definitely not. And my kitchen is a lot. Also, if, if this is the first time people are watching you, you're, you know, you're not a trained chef. You're just, you're a home cook. You're a regular person. Yeah. Clearly, clearly not a trained chef. You're just a regular person. No, but that's um, why I love watching you. Cause that's, how, cause you're real. And that's how people, you know, this is what most people are. And that's what they need to see. Thank you. Yeah. It's, this is as real as it gets. Um, but yeah, I love cooking. Well, you know, I love cooking because I love eating. And I love eating this way because you can really eat anything you want. You just have to, like I always say, you just have to reimagine it. Um, and that's it. I didn't show you my, oh, I ate the salad things. I didn't show it with the crock, but that's okay. You get, you get the point. Um, now I get to start working on my next thing for you. I can't wait. Well, you're coming on after Cinco de Mayo, but before Mother's Day and before Memorial Day, if that gives you okay. any ideas of things that you might want to create. So it could be brunch, uh, Memorial Day barbecue, you know, whatever those, uh, because the show is called Plant-Based Classics and she it takes some classics and she makes them vegan and she makes them healthy. And Jerry yeah. says, she's just lovely. Gina says, you really hit it out of the park. Yep, I agree. This was really exciting. Mar Mar Larry so says, looks great. I will try this soup. Yeah, it looks delicious. Even if somebody didn't want to take the time to make the bread part or the cheese part, they could make the soup part. Well, that's what I was going to say is the soup part is standalone. I had it, um, you know, I, I've eaten it for days on end um, because when I make a big pot of something, I like to eat it. And a lot of times I don't do the bread or the cheese on it. Just the soup is delicious by itself. But if you're, you know, saying I'm going to make it like how you would expect it, I wanted to make it like that. <clears throat> oh, and for any of you who watch who are members of PBNSG, I'm hosting the heart disease support group tonight. So come on with your bad self, with your bad heart. That's nice. Well, tell us a little about that and how, if how you know, because I don't know if that's in the show notes to get people to join. So maybe tell, talk a little bit about PBNSG and yeah. what, what it does and what you do for them and things like that. Okay. So PBNSG stands for Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group. It's a nonprofit and I'm a volunteer. I do everything volunteer with them. Um, and I host once a month, the same day I do um, your show. I always do the um, heart disease support group. And so we have a group of people, a lot of them have had heart attacks or, you know, know that they really need to get their heart disease under control. A lot of them are new to this way of eating. And so we talk, we support each other, we talk about what challenges. And then a lot of times I have um, guests, we have a guest tonight. Um, and she's going to talk about, it's Julie Latz, she's going to talk about uh, peaceful eating. She was a binge eater. And um, so, you know, you're welcome to join. I think it's, I'm not sure how much it costs a month, but in addition to all these different support groups, and there's a million, there's diabetes and obesity and overeating and meditation and a million things, but we get like big 
big name guests like Chef AJ and Dr. Lyle and Dr. Goldhammer and Dr. Barnard and Dr. Campbell and Dr. Esselstyn. And so you can get um, for one fee, I think it's $20 a month, you can get, you know, to watch all of the streaming with all of these phenomenal plant-based luminaries. So that's it. So check us out. I, that's great. Well, thanks so much, Lauren. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I appreciate all your Zoomunity. Zoomunity. My Zoomunity. Well, thank you. And thanks all you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when we have two shows. We have 11 o'clock. Feeling great with Lisa and Nate. They're going to show you how they sprout, how they make microgreens, and what to do with them. And then at 2 p.m., we have Planiful Kiki, and she's going to be talking about her new book and making a delicious recipe. Take care, everybody.